Hey guys, so recently someone approached me on my Etsy store and asked me about making them a custom fan shroud for a 2080 Ti Strix GPU. They wanted something uh, compact to go into a small ITX form factor build with the ability to mount two Noctua Slim fans. Uh, luckily, I happen to have a couple of stock 2080 Ti heat sinks off the GPUs that are in my Threadripper workstation since they're currently water blocked with Corsair uh, water blocks. Having a physical part on hand to measure off of and actually physically test fit parts that you're trying to design is absolutely critical. Uh, so this is what I originally came up with. Um, it's basically a one side it mounts to the heat sink and the other side has holes for 120 mil fan. This took a few tries to get everything lined up working properly. But after about 10 prototypes, I would say, uh, this is my final result. As you can see, I added a shroud to cover the fans. This is strictly for aesthetic purposes, but I would also say now this is more of a shroud and less of like a fan adapter type bracket. So that's all fine and dandy. And at this point, I was quite pleased with my work, but I realized I likely put way too much time into this project already for little financial return, targeting only one customer who reached out to me but I thought I would chalk it up as some good learning experience and just good customer service that would be beneficial as a whole going forward. And I'm not sure how I first realized this, but I have a few of these three fan style Strix cards. Uh, this is actually an RX 580. I have a 1660 Ti, RX 480, a broken GTX 1080, uh, same, same shroud. And although there's physical differences across the heat sinks on these different cards, the mounting holes for the stock shroud are all in the same place. Like this was a huge discovery because it now meant that these fan shrouds that I spent all this time uh, designing, they won't just work on 2080 Ti Strix GPUs, they'll work on all these different cards, as long as it has a fan shroud basically that looks like this. That means that all this effort I put into designing this thing now has much more value to many more people. So Strix cards of this generation are aging. Maybe you have one, maybe the fans are starting to get noisy, or Maybe you accidentally stuck your finger in one while the system was on and snapped off a blade. And yes, replacement fans are available from China, but maybe you don't want to wait two months for a replacement. This allows you to use normal 120 millimeter fans, which are widely available as you know, and come in many different lighting options. Uh, and can be purchased to be optimized for acoustics or for performance or just aesthetics. So with this new realization of wider spread compatibility, I quickly modeled up a non-slim version uh, for people who may want to go the chunkier and potentially better cooling route. Uh, we'll find this out in a moment when I get into some testing. This chunkier one shouldn't be that much different than the commercially available uh, Noctua 3070 edition card as far as cooling goes, because you can just put whatever 120 mil fans you want on here. So that's what we'll be testing today. I have a RX 580 here because it's the most accessible card I had. Uh, we will first overclock it and try to get some extra heat output from it. And then we'll mount two Noctua Slim 15 millimeter thick fans to it and look at the thermal differences. Uh, maybe the acoustic differences, but that would be pretty limited. My space here has a fairly high sound floor. And then followed up by the 25 normal thickness testing and we'll compare whatever differences we see and all that good stuff. So before we do any comparative testing, I wanna make sure that this uh, heat sink is absorbing heat as efficiently as possible from the GPU. And this card has never been opened, so we're gonna pop this open and replace the thermal interface material inside, uh, check the thermal pads and replace the thermal paste. That way we can be sure that we're getting the maximum amount of heat coming out of the GPU into the heat sink, which will hopefully maximize any differences we might see between the stock fan shroud and my fan shrouds. So as we can tell, this card has never been opened. It still has the factory sticker on it there. So let's crack this baby open and see what the thermal paste looks like. She'll just, yeah, pops apart nicely. So let's have a look. How's this thermal paste look? It's pretty dry. That's definitely the original paste, so we'll get that cleaned up. So thermal paste and to a lesser extent, the thermal pads can dry up over time and significantly impact the heat transfer between the GPU die and the heat sink. Opening your card and changing the thermal paste is normal maintenance in my opinion and shouldn't be something that you're afraid of. If you're unsure, just go to YouTube and search disassembly for your particular card so you can be sure of where all the screws and cables are so you don't damage anything. And here we're using the Kingpin KPX thermal compound, which is one of the best ones you can buy just because we're trying to really maximize any differences we're going to see uh, in the cooling performance here. 
But if you have really old thermal paste in your graphics card, any name brand thermal paste is going to do a great job. Now, some of you are wondering why this light doesn't go all the way across. It's because these Strix cards actually only have LEDs on this side, and they actually use these like fiber optic styled plastic pipes in behind the cooler. And what happens is over time, they become foggy. They should be crystal clear. If they're crystal clear, they'll carry the light all the way across. But um, as these little plastic tubes inside have aged, you can see right there, it's very white and foggy, and that's why the light's not making it all the way across. So now let's run Heaven on the Extreme Benchmark and uh, see what this gets up to. I'm gonna manually set the fan speed to 50%. So we have a really slight overclock on this. Uh, try to put some extra heat into the GPU. We'll just see where this levels out at 50% fan speed. Okay, it's been way longer than need to be, and it uh, looks like we've balanced right out at 49 here, sitting 49 right on the money. So let's go ahead and ramp the fan speed to 100% to just see what our cooling potential is. So at about 100% fan speed, it looks like we could shave off about seven degrees on the GPU core. It's sitting right around 42. Seemed to flatline pretty good here. Kind of bumping down to 41 but i'm impatient so let's get my shroud installed and see how it does now i'll be honest guys i actually have not tested this product yet so i have no idea how it will perform if it'll even be better or worse than this but we're going to find all that out very shortly so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just take out these three screws here And there are three more along this edge. Don't lose these screws because we're gonna reuse them in a minute to mount my fan shroud. This stock shroud just lifts off. So there's the factory shroud. There's those uh, tubes I was telling you that get discolored over time. These are very frosted. They're supposed to be clear to carry light all the way from the LED here all the way to the end. So, I mean, technically you could measure these and you could get new plastic tubes and you could bring the lighting back in across the shroud, but, but that's a topic for another time. So next thing we have to do is get these stock fans out of the way. Look at how much of the heat sink actually is not covered by fan. Like you have all this section here, right? So I, I gotta think that, uh, that my shrouds are gonna make a, a good difference here. And hey, even if they don't, I learned a lot designing them and they allow you to run whatever 120 mil fans with them uh, that you want. So I have two of my fan shrouds here printed out. One's in uh, matte black carbon fiber and one's in uh, white PTG. Uh, I added brass inserts to these just to make them a little more robust and more like a finished product. Uh, for this test, let's use the, let's use the white one. Normally I'd blow this card out or something, but I'm trying to keep it as apples to apples, so I, I don't really want to do that for the sake of this comparison. So, trying to figure out a way how I can make these cords reach. And it looks like on these Noctua fans, I might be able to route the cable at the bottom and uh, feed it through like that. There we go. You can see the cords coming in under there now. Kind of wrote it under the heat sink and it looks like, yep, it's gonna plug right into the fan header there. And there is fans that have longer cables. There is two tie down points here and here. Is that looking pretty good? There we go. Pop our zip tie through. 
All right. So there is the finished product. So let's get this installed and uh, see how she works. So now we'll have to use a GPU tweak three so that we can control the exterior fan speed here. But let's just set it to 50%. Uh, Gonna open up MSI Afterburner to apply the same overclocks. <laughs> okay, in this very non-scientific test, uh, our maximum GPU temp is sitting about 52 degrees Celsius with the fans at 50%. Uh, obviously 50% on these two fans and 50% on these three fans are not really comparable besides it's just an arbitrary 50%. But let's see what the maximum cooling potential of this fan setup is. And let's turn these fans up to 100%. Okay, so with the Noctua Slims installed, they are running at 100% right now. You can't even hear them if I get my mic close to them. They, I don't know if you can hear that, but they, they make basically almost no sound but uh, it looks like we're hovering around 44, bouncing off 43. So we're literally getting the same cooling uh, as the factory stock three fans, but these are way quieter, like almost inaudible, uh, you know, at just a couple of feet distance. So now what I'm curious to know is what happens if we bolt some serious Noctua fans on here? So now I just need to wait till tomorrow when longer screws show up for the regular size fans and uh, I'll be able to see what kind of cooling potential we get with uh, with a full thickness shroud on there with, with a couple of Noctua PPC fans. All right guys, some time has passed. I've got the proper length screws I need to mount a normal 25 mil thick uh, fans onto this shroud. These are the Noctua PPC Industrial 3000 RPM fans. If you've never used these fans, they move just an absolutely insane amount of air. They are loud on full speed, but they are crazy durable. They're uh, water resistant. They're designed to be used in like a really industrial, heavy duty, high heat, high load, continuous use type of situation. So these are pretty much the most BA fans that you can get. We're just gonna mount these up here. That one didn't wanna go in, very nice. There's the finished look with uh, the thick boys installed. And let's see how this thing will cool. <laughs> so it looks like at 50% fan speed on the Noctua PPCs, uh, we've balanced right out around 44, 45 C on the core. Now let's turn them up to 100% and see what happens. Oh, at 50%, these fans are very quiet still. I can barely hear them from about a foot and a half away, but they're moving a tremendous amount of air. So let's just turn them up to 100%. That's probably pretty comparable to how loud the stock fans were, to be honest. And let's see what happens to our thermals. So I would say we've balanced out again here. Looks like we dropped down to about 41. Uh, so we shaved off three degrees, I guess, in this, in this particular test. So now I just tried setting, uh, remember the GPU fans aren't actually hooked up. So I just tried setting this external fan to auto. And it looks like what it's doing is as soon as the GPU gets to 60 C, it's uh, turning the fans on. But as you can see by this, you know, how long the fans are off for, like the fans are barely on. They come on maybe 10% and then shut off. And that's holding us right at 60 C. And remember this, this GPU is loaded like 100% right now. It's, it's, overclocked, you know, slight overclock on it uh, with 50% power limit just cranked going 100%. And uh, yeah, guys, the, the fans are barely on. 
I think this is a really a true testament to how efficient these fans are really. Um, they only have to turn on for a second to push a little air through the heat sink and that cools it off enough that it actually shuts the fans back off again. So a summary then. Using larger fans allows us to move more air at lower RPMs. This results in less noise and depending on the type of fan you use, anywhere from the same cooling to slightly better cooling in this example. I just think that the RX 580 isn't a very power hungry card and if we wanted to see larger differences in the stock three fan shroud versus my dual 120 mil fan shroud, there would have to be a higher thermal load on the heat sink, like maybe a 1080 Ti or a 2080 Ti. So if you thought this type of thing was cool, where I design a fan shroud from scratch and then do some thermal testing, be sure to drop me a like. It really helps other people find my videos. And if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon and select all to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you happen to have one of these older generation three fan Strix cards and your fans are failing or maybe you just want something cool and unique, I will have a link down below where you can check these out and maybe purchase one if it suits you. And that's all for this one, guys. I'll be sure to see you soon in the next video.